Hello, this is Mrs. Lewis again with today's lesson on how the structure of the atom can help us understand static electricity. We know that all materials are composed of atoms. You are composed of atoms. And here's an example of some of the different types of atoms that are found inside of your body. Here's a conventional picture of what an atom looks like. And we also know that there are many different kinds of atoms. And those different kinds of atoms make up all of the different elements that we find in the world. We also know that elements can combine into compounds. And elements and compounds can combine into mixtures. Here's an example of one element, element X, let's say, and here's element Y, and you'll see that these little circles represent their atoms. Element X has made up of these big red atoms, and element Y is made up of these little blue atoms. When we put them together, we can make a mixture of the different elements. They're not combined, they're just sitting there together. Or we can actually chemically combine element X and element Y and make them into a compound. We also know that different materials have different electric properties. An atom consists of a nucleus in the center and a vast region outside of the nucleus that is empty space. And the little tiny electrons are found in this empty space outside of the nucleus. Electrons have a negative charge. They're very tiny and they have a negative charge. The nucleus has a positive charge because of the protons and the electrons, which are outside of the nucleus, are held to the nucleus in the atom because of the attraction of the negative and the positive charge, but they're held very weakly, and that's going to be important. Since they're held weakly, electrons are often removed or added to atoms by normal everyday occurrences. Here's an atom, and this atom has lost one of its electrons. We know that because it doesn't have the same number of electrons as protons. It has two protons, but only one electron. So somehow it must have lost one of its electrons. Here's another atom. This atom has gained an electron. We know that because it has only one proton, but it has two electrons. So somehow, this atom has gained an electron. We know that the nucleus of the atom contains the positively charged protons, and it also has the neutrons. These are very large particles and they are held together inside of the nucleus. They are held together very tightly, and they are not removed by any everyday process. We would need a great deal of energy to pull these protons and neutrons apart, and everyday occurrences do not supply that amount of energy. So we are not going to be able to use changes in protons or neutrons to explain static electricity because in everyday occurrences which cause static electricity we don't have enough energy to remove the electrons or the protons. So we have to explain static electricity by removing or adding the electrons. We have all had many experiences with static electricity phenomena in our everyday life. Surely sometime you have taken your dog or your cat and had them sit on your lap and take your hand and pet them for a period of time. 
very relaxing for you and your pet. And then when your pet leaves, all of a sudden all of his or her hair stands up on end. So somehow some electrons have been transferred between your hand and the dog's hair. We've probably had a chance to use some kind of a decal made out of plastic and been able to put that on a window without using any kind of glue or tape. It just sticks there because of static electricity. Or maybe you've shuffled your feet across the floor, across the carpet in your house, and then you've gone to touch something metal like this doorknob and gotten a little shock. Or maybe you've had different kinds of material that you've been wearing. For instance, if you were wearing a wool coat over a silk dress, and then you were to take that off and pull that wool against the silk, you would have noticed that you would have created what we call static cling. And those materials would stick together and perhaps even stick to you depending upon the kind of materials that you had together. So here's a girl with her dress being attracted to her um, socks here because of its rubbing together and moving the electrons. Or maybe you've put your clothes in the dryer and tossed them around so that they rubbed against each other and then you've taken them out of the dryer and they all stick together. Those are all examples of static electricity. And static electricity is caused by us moving electrons from one material to another. In all of these everyday experiences, we had two things that were rubbing together. And when those two things rubbed together, an electron was rubbed off of one of the materials and rubbed onto the other materials. So here's a little graphic that kind of shows what that happened, how that happens. Here's one atom. This is in one material. And here's the electron. And just by rubbing, by just everyday rubbing, that we can give that energy to the electron. And in order to move, the electron has to get some energy. But since it's held weakly to the nucleus, it doesn't need that much energy. Just by rubbing, we can give the electron enough energy to go from one material and to jump into the atoms of the other material. And then this is going to create a difference in charge, and those two materials are going to be attracted. We'll be working with different examples of static electricity in class today.